Welcome to Cheap Seats, a show that takes a new look at the old games, and today we're going to kick it Wide World style. That's right. We're going to be looking at what makes a real man, the manliest of men. Is it a guy who can lift 500 pounds over his head? Is it a guy who looks like he can lift 500 pounds over his head? Or is it a guy who weighs 500 pounds? We'll find out today on Cheap Seats. First up, we're going to take you out to Columbus, Ohio, 1971, the World Weightlifting Championships. Is there an L, Pat? Have you tried to lift a color television set? Okay, I'm gonna solve the puzzle. Veterans Memorial Auditorium. Nice, thanks. Ooh, I'll take the commemorative set of flags for 300 and just put the rest on a gift certificate. Hello, I'm Bob Biatti, just off stage. Hey, it's the Lost Village person. Or a young Captain Steuben. The World Weightlifting Championships is in progress. Now we'll be introducing... Okay, welcome to the open call auditions for the Sopranos. 142 pounds or more. These are the fellows who will be trying to lift 500 pounds. Joe Doobie. Which Doobie you be? Good one, Raj. Thanks, B. Ron. Otis's stepbrother. Husky Jack Osborne. He's the current U.S. championship. He beat Doobie in the finals. So you could say he smoked Doobie in the finals? And now the mystery man. Hey, it's a bloated Lee of Schreiber. Russia. He's never before competed in a world Bob Zamuda preparing his next heckle. Years of age. All right, show's over, folks. Time to put them all back in their cages. Why is Tony B. limping? Look, it's Hal from 2001. You're going to find this weight rather difficult, Dave. He was fifth in last year's world championships. He was fifth Rudolf in Mang, part of the lesser known Mang dynasty. This oh, incidentally is. Sweet dress socks. Press 400. Okay, that doesn't look like that much weight. Already today, 440 pounds. And he's oh, God, I was wrong. And he's down. Say cheese, perfect. And I'm afraid it looks like Rudolph Mang may have been injured. And what would make this you think that? The way his legs snapped, crackled, and popped like a Rice Krispie? Rudolph Mang buckling under the weight of 451 and three quarter pounds. Fortunately, they've got a team of gondoliers on hand to steer him around Venice when he heals. Looks like it really does hurt him. Really? Looks like Rudolph Mang's all manged up. And he's got to contend with a fly in his face? And this is what they've been saying all week. Are the weights getting too big? Okay, are they helping Mang? Are they telling him about a great deal on the old Navy performance fleece? You're in the hood now, Rudolph. With more from Columbus, Ohio, and the World Weightlifting Oh, God, they're lifting you on the bad leg! Okay, there was so much wrong with that carry-off. I think we need to do a cheap seats breakdown. Sean? Breakdown. Thanks, guys. Now, this is a classic breakdown of trainer services. Let's take a look at what went wrong. Number one, apparently there's not one stretcher in Columbus, Ohio. Number two, how old is the guy on his right leg? 80? They couldn't get another weightlifter to help? Or any of the old Navy guys? Well, actually, that guy in the front is an old Navy guy. He was at Guadalcanal. Number three, everybody's technique is so far off. You gotta lift with the legs, gentlemen. And finally, they're holding the poor guy by the leg that just snapped. I'm not a doctor, but that can't be good for him. Back to you, fellas. Breakdown. Okay, let's head back to Columbus, where the townsfolk are no strangers to lifting heavy things. Go Buckeyes. Can anyone make sense of that scoreboard? And now, Ken Patara. It's not for you to understand, Dave. Job two months ago, just Shorter shorts, please. And this is tough in the United States. Where well, it's nice to see Jack Osborne out of rehab. He's really bulked up. Yeah, he's almost as big as Kelly now. able to do their weightlifting. When in Russia, there are three to five million weightlifters in a very, very... Does he really need the glasses? All he has to see is the bar. Well, maybe he hates the stigma of weightlifters being dumb. Did you ever think of that? U.S. title holder, Ken Patera. Did you hear that? Incidentally, this is yeah, that was Rudolph Mang falling off the training table. 468 and a quarter pounds, and if he does this, this will be his... Good luck, Dave. ...in the press. Yep, he's got this one in the bag. See, nothing dumb about attempting that weight. Whoa, 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 the weights, the weights, they're rolling into the front row. Forget Patera, the weights. 68 and a quarter pounds. Back there. Nice bumblebee socks. Hey, back off. He's the Hamburglar's pumped up brother. Great for Ken Patera, also for the whole U.S. team. Right angle, right angle. 
And as we can hear, apparently his right ankle is injured. Apparently. I wonder, I guess, whether or not man really has reached his limit. You mind if I work in? We'll be back okay, that's like the rollaway bed you sleep on at your grandparents' house. And where was it when Wang went down? To summarize, the West German guy gets dragged off by four busboys from the Venetian, and the American guy gets a bed? No wonder the world hates us. It's not your fault. I know. It's not your fault. I know. It's not your fault. Don't f with me. It's not your fault. I know. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Cheap Seats. How about a little do you care? Don't mind if I do you care. Just the facts. Do you care? Do you care that in 1977, Ken Patera was named Pro Wrestling Illustrated's most hated wrestler? Do you care that Ken Patera is the brother of former Seattle Seahawks coach Jack Patera? Do you care that Ken Patera was sentenced to two years in jail for beating a female police officer so severely that he gave her a concussion and knocked out several of her teeth? Wait a minute. Wait one gosh darn minute. Is that really true? Yes. Pro Wrestling Illustrated really is a magazine. Oh, I thought you were making that up. No, I wasn't. And here's something else I'm not making up. Our show's only a half an hour, so we had to cut some good stuff, but we don't want you to miss it, so we're going to show it to you in a little segment we like to call... It's one done cut. It's one done cut. An 18-year-old with more teeth than a duffel bag zipper lifted some heavy weights. Gerald Ford offered his opinion on the state of weightlifting, while announcer Bob Beatty described the action with an Othello piece in his ear. And Joe Doobie became the first man to participate in a weightlifting competition wearing only his underwear. Okay, let's get back to the action. Slower, slower, slower. The world record holder. First time in the world championships. Slower, slower, slower. This is his first attempt. Slower, slower, slower. And Serge Redding, the world record Okay, holder. this is supposed to be over here. This is supposed to be over here. This is supposed to be clean. Guys, we all live in this house together, okay? So everyone's got to pitch in. Even you, Puck. Trying to start out in the first attempt at 400. Got a little white powder on your shoulder. Outfit by Pablo Escobar. The overall world record holder. Okay, let's see. Bend down. Grab bar clean and then jerk or is it jerk and then clean god damn it is it lift with the back or the leg i always forget that's what attempt and go for that elusive 500 pound lift never before done now what do i do oh yeah this and he does oh. it easily Ta -da. First place in the overall Ta -da. in the world weightlifting championships. Man, Nicholson is everywhere. I'll take that. And that. And the crowd from Russian Idol loves it. Seacrest, Roy Zhu. Uh oh. In the super heavyweight Whoa, that chick was heavy. Reading of Belgium, third second. Laterata of Finland, third. No, I will not sleep with him. All right, maybe just one. <laughs> well, that wraps up the weightlifting competition. Pause it, Ran. Okay. I can't. Pause it. Pause it. Did you chalk up before you used this remote? Yes. Did you? No. You know you got to chalk up when you use this remote. Come on. Welcome back to Cheap Seats. Today we're trying to determine what makes a real man. Now we've already seen men who can lift 500 pounds, but when you think about it, how often in real life are you going to have 500 pounds sitting on your chest? Never, unless you're this guy's girlfriend. 
Good point. Now we take you to the world of shaved chests, fake tans, and men who look like they can lift 500 pounds. No, it's not the VH1 Fashion Awards. It's the 1975 Mr. Olympia competition. Let's check it out. You're not what I would call a normal human being. You're, you're, you're strong. Are you aware of this? Yeah, I'm aware of it, and I feel proud about it, because uh, that's uh, the fortunate thing. Okay, this is 1975. It's now almost 30 years later, and his accent hasn't improved at all. It's actually gotten worse. How the hell is that possible? Body continuously with you, and I'm proud of it. You know, I, that uh, it's beautiful. Hello, nipple, my old friend. Your posing techniques. Are there any, is there anything unusual you do here? Well, would that? What I'd obviously try to do is to show the public that, uh, and also the judges, that a big body can move gracefully. That's like when I am allegedly you. forcefully grabbing a woman, she'll know she's being allegedly forcefully grabbed gracefully. Grace. You know, this together makes the champion. So that's what I try to do. I take a lot of ballet lessons. Nah, you take ballet. <laughs> what a wuss. Hands gracefully and how to look... Uh, Superfluous flex. Thank you. Proud and that's the king, you know, and that, that's what you, you learn. Of course I'm the king, but you know... <laughs> no, you're just the governor, and that's plenty. You know, I mean, I know that I'm the king, but now I have to let the people know when you pose, you know. There are only three. Bachelor number one enjoys uh, lifting weights and narrow conservative thinking. Bachelor number two enjoys lifting weights and has an anger management issue. Bachelor number three enjoys candlelight dinners, long walks on the beach, wild mood swings, and popping his back knee. So winning the championship is vital in terms of endorsements, personal appearances and other income producing activities like calendars and singing telegrams is judged to be third is careful you wouldn't like him when he's angry not enough definition in the cut of his muscles and perhaps a few pounds too heavy he also lacks some assurance this is his first professional appearance Serge Nubray is next in addition to being Mr. France he is a I thought Jerry Lewis was Mr. France Look at my tax ladies go! His chest and arm muscles are cleanly divided, symmetrical. But his celebrated weakness is back and slender lower body. Who's celebrating Mr. France's weakness? The Republicans. The winner of the tall man division, of course, is Arnold Schwarzenegger. The king has beaten down the opposition. And we call that move the grope a dope. just one more opponent, Franco Colombo, of the small man's division. Do not adjust your pictures, people. Yes, he is turning green. With envy. Well, I, I can say, I feel at the point that I can say I feel happy at a goal. What's up with this music? It's like an after-school special or something. Dude, that's the Hulk. Give him some ACDC or something. Wait, wait, wouldn't it be great if Ferrigno entered the lightweight category as David Banner, and then someone stepped on his foot and he got all mad, and then came out in the heavyweight category as the Hulk? Yeah, and then still lost to Arnold. Retired. You're young. You really begin to get in better. Hey, Frank, your epidermis is showing. This is a last breath. Franco. I love that they're whispering like it's golf. What do they think? If they're too loud, he'll slice a delt? You see a laugh in that there. You got to get him. Columbo making him laugh. Is Columbo making yeah. Schwarzenegger laugh? They're such good friends. They're best friends. They, they train together all the time. They train together all the time. So they travel together, but Columbo always loses. Yeah, he's like the Washington Generals of bodybuilding. Yeah, I half expect Arnold to hit a double bicep pose and then throw a bucket of confetti on him. Oh, so that's why Columbo ran against him for governor, to make Arnold look good. Yeah, that explains Columbo's campaign platform of outsourcing all of Hollywood's film industry to the Philippines. Now, I want to ask you something. Has Columbo ever beaten Schwarzenegger? He's never beaten him in a contest. So there's no real reason to believe he's going to do it today. And now the competition is over. The judges are tabulating the scores, and in just a moment, we'll know if Franco Columbo has managed to pull... Okay, there does not need to be that much paper to judge this event. All you need is a Polaroid of Michelangelo's David and a checklist. Maybe the last time we'll see this great you want to do what with me, with your what? As indicated, he'll retire after we'll today. talk later. Okay, here comes the announcement. Well, dude, Columbo's really bulked up. How do you know? You've never seen him out of his trench coat. True, but he has gotten bigger since the in-laws. Done it again. Arnold Schwarzenegger successfully defending his title for the sixth... Good thing, too, because there would have been a recall had he lost. Presented this year by Dr. P.G. Kornhoff, Minister of Sport for the Nation of South Africa, and Ben Weider, President of the International Federation of Bodybuilders. Is he trying to ride Schwarzenegger? Of all the 97-pound weaklings in our audience today, this is Bob Biatti saying so long. Touch him. Touch him. Yay! Ooh. Now, that was a pretty good pose-off. Yeah, it was fun. It actually inspired us to start a similar competition. That's right. Introducing the first annual Cheap Seats Biannual Poser-Off.
Let's meet our two contestants. Our first poser is a junior at St. Ignatius in Brookline, Massachusetts. She says she's angry and dead inside. Her parents say she still listens to her old Britney Spears albums. Say hello to Kathy O'Brien. Shut up, you losers. I can't wait for you to die so I can drink your blood. And her opponent, a three-time poser champion from Great Neck, Long Island, and he is really special because not only is he not black, but until a week ago, he thought Dr. Dre was his dad's urologist. Say shalom alechem to Ari Levy. Yo, yo, what up, bitches? All right, let's get to the pose down posers. Are you ready? Pose it down. Uh, look at that. I don't believe it. I don't believe what I just saw. Ari Levy going from a buffalo stance into pointing a Tech 9. I almost felt like the gun was in my face. Seamless. Wow, Kathy is going to have her black nail polish hands full if she wants to try and compete with that one. And don't forget that self mutilation is no longer allowed in international sanctioned events like this one. Short of filing down her molars, I'm going to say she's <laughs> Doesn't look good for O'Brien. Oh, the apathetic hair twirl. Ah, uh, yes. We knew we were going to see that one. We knew she'd cart it out if she was in trouble. Too little, too late. I feel like also she looked like she cared too much about what she was doing as she was doing it, which cancels out any of the intended apathy. That's right. Now, as the judges are tallying their final scores, I think we're going to find out what we already know. Once again, Ari Levy is our poser of the year, and no doubt, Future disappointment to his parents and his friends. Congratulations, Ari. We'll be back with more cheap seats after this. You were writing down anything. No, I wasn't. On ESPN Classic. So come on down here. Okay, welcome back to Cheap Seats and our continuing quest to define a real man. Now, we've already seen a guy who can lift 500 pounds. We've also seen a guy with perhaps the most amazing physique in history. But what about a 5-foot, 9-inch basketball player who for 13 years held his own against the big trees of the NBA and managed to muscle his way into the Hall of Fame? That's right, the one, the only, Calvin Murphy. Solo division in the Grand National Baton Twirling Championship. Okay, this looks like a scene from Drumline. The musical. It's the Baton Death March. He entered and won the Texas State Championship in June. As he began this performance, he had two minutes and two minutes only. In which okay, fine. So he dropped it. I'm sure he gets better. A slow start, dropping the baton. NBA All-Rookie Team, 1971. Now the panel of judges... Yeah. Are judging on average 17.9 points per game. Of which are devoted to the content of the yeah. routine. Very simply, how difficult. He led the NBA in free throw percentage twice. Devoted to execution. Judges that one's called the Nexorcist. Variety, difficulty, and show made 78 consecutive free throws in 1980-81. They should be high enough only to create time for the trick underneath. So the trick should be finished as the baton comes down. Wait, I thought you said he was good. He's better than you. True, but I'm fine with that. Nervous. Calvin Murphy, basketball All-America at Niagara in 1968, 69, and 70. He played college basketball at the I'm same sure college was a very experimental time for Calvin. At LSU. Yeah, kick it. Boys, and their names Average 17.9 points per game. Ben Murphy was drafted by the San Diego Rockets of the National Basketball Association. That's not that hard. They became the Houston Rockets. He remains... And I'm sure none of his teammates give him for any of this. NBA at only 5 feet 9 inches tall. Is of course a remarkable accomplishment. Jason, do the honors. I will. Fast One forward. Of the <laughs> scores in the seven to eight point range. How you like me now, bitches? Place finish. Okay, place, Calvin needs a new hobby. How disappointed Calvin Murphy was, but he left the arena and did not return for a ceremony of. In our ongoing quest to define a real man, we've so far watched weightlifting bodybuilding, and baton twirling, and the jury is still out. So for our next event, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We're done with baton twirling? Yes. But I want to see the other guy. Why? Because. If you've seen one grown man twirl a baton, you've seen them all. Oh, man. come on. Let's watch the next no. guy. No. Please. No. Just a little bit. No. Please. 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 All right. Fine. Just for a minute. But then we have to move on. You're the best. This is Michael Tagg from Chicago. Oh, come on. <laughs> His name is Tagg and he's a baton champion? Like Murphy, he gets off to a very slow start. That is just far too easy. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is <laughs> Then how did he win? 
<laughs> In fact, ultimately, Michael Tag would drop the baton more than any. All right, I've seen enough. Fast event. forward. An hour or so after the competition was over. Can we get a tighter shot of Lampley? No, but uh, can we see some more lights on him? Denver, and we managed to persuade him to come back to the arena to talk to us. We're now in a hallway outside. And why does that matter? Your rapid exit from the arena at the end of the competition left a lot of unanswered questions. Precisely why did you leave so quickly? Well, first of all, uh, I forgot that I was supposed to come back from the score sheet. I was very disappointed with myself. Yeah, right. Uh, contrary to what may, people may believe, I think I'm a much better twirler than I showed today. Well, there's a lot of people uh, who believe like, otherwise, you know, Calvin. Sometimes you get, feel that apple in your throat, and I think this is what happened. Apple in your throat? Uh, it had nothing to do is with he talking about Adam's apple? He meant a lump in his throat. Yeah, but he said apple. It's a twirling thing you wouldn't understand, okay? Calvin, you waited 11 years to come back to the baton twirling. Why did you decide, after the long layoff, to come back this year? Uh... A lot of reasons. I've never uh, achieved a, a title. Uh, touring is a very uh, uh, exciting sport. It's an art. And I felt I still had a little left in me to come back and to get a title. Yes. Was it a little uh, left in you. Very much so. I met a lot of people, a lot of nice people through twirling, through the USTA. And I'm not sorry at all that I did come back. Although we are. With this program. Will you twirl again? No, I'm through with twirling. Damn. So we came here expecting an unusual story and got, I think, a lot more than we bargained for. We wind up with what looked like for a while a brewing controversy and turns out to be a very human story in sport. The story of a big time, well-known professional basketball player who choked in a baton. Oh, uh, Lampley, he's right next to you. Okay, I think we'd all agree that any man who can answer the question, will you twirl again with a straight face is indeed a real man. I agree. Well, that's it for our show today, but before we go, we should hand out some cheapies, Wide World style. The Ricky Dudley Hands of Stone Award goes to the guy who won the baton twirling contest with eight drops. Least valuable player, in this case, it's a whole group of people. It's the medical staff on hand in Columbus, Ohio for the weightlifting championships. Half the time, they don't use a stretcher to carry a guy off, and when they do, it's a rollaway bed from a Ramada Inn. So thanks for tuning in and leaving us on. He's Randy, I'm Jason. We'll see you next time on Cheap Seats. Get up, Ooh. My back. My back.